Hello, everyone. GMGM, GM. welcome back to another episode of Overpriced JPEGs. It is time for your Friday weekly recap. And joining me today is Mac Flavel, founder and CEO of Big Head Club. Mac is such a great guest. He has actually been on the podcast. This will be his third time. I think that is the most of any guest other than Zeneca, of course. So it is always fun to have Mac on because he just has, he has the hottest takes and he gives us some hot takes in this episode too. So you'll definitely want to stick around. At the end, there was a take that I thought was uh, particularly fiery that, uh, that he gives. So the other reason that it's so fun to have Mac on is he is a very important piece of honestly, NFT history. Mac worked at a company called Axiom Zen that ultimately became or, or spun off Dapper Labs, which you may have heard of. And Mac was the one who had the idea for CryptoKitties. And CryptoKitties launched the ERC-721 standard. Prior to CryptoKitties, there was no ERC-721s. And that was really a product of Mac's marketing idea. He says in this episode, he said before he was the kitty, he was the kitty part of CryptoKitties. He's not technical, but he has a really, I think, sharp eye for consumer behavior. And so we do at the end of this conversation get into what he's building now with his with Big Head Club, a project called We Ones that is very exciting. There's an offer for OPJ listeners and subscribers, so you can hear more about that. Of course, on that note, you should subscribe if you're not already subscribed on YouTube or on the podcast app. Please go ahead and give us that follow, give us that subscribe, um, and also go subscribe to the newsletter. This will apply to newsletter subscribers as well. And I've been plugging the newsletter a lot lately. We're putting a lot of energy and effort into it. I want to make this something really fantastic. So please go and subscribe to the Overpriced JPEGs newsletter. The link is below. And oh yes, my last thing before we get into the episode, I announced this on Wednesday, but I just want to flag it again here. Our first live overpriced JPEG event. Our first event for the overpriced happy hour tour is going to be on Thursday, March 30th in Miami. It's the day before Miami NFT kicks off. We will be joined by Julian Hogwin, the Doodle CEO. I'm really excited for that conversation. It should be a great event. We're going to drink some cocktails. We're going to talk to, to Julian. You can ask your questions. We'll mingle. We'll take pics. We'll hang out. We'll network. It'll be, you'll laugh, you'll cry. You'll have the time of your life. So uh, if you are an OPJ NFT holder, you will be able to start reserving your seat for that next Thursday. So Thursday, March 17th, you'll be able to start reserving your seat for the March 30th event with Julian in Miami. Um, I mentioned this on the Wednesday podcast. We've tweeted about it. We have also, um, we are airdropping you a new NFT to re essentially replace your current OPJ NFT. Uh, won't get into the, the the story there. If you wake up, you know, if you go to sleep for two weeks and you wake up, you won't even know that anything is different. They'll they'll look very different from one another. The new NFT that you're being airdropped will look like the current NFT, and that is where all the utility will live. So that is where you will that is the NFT you will use to reserve your seat for Miami. That is the NFT you will use to redeem for your bottle of gin, which will be coming in, in the not too distant future. And um that we will be snapshotting all of our holders on Tuesday and then airdropping the new NFT to them a few hours later, probably the wee hours of Wednesday. Okay, bit of a, uh, I'm, I feel like these intros are getting longer because I have all these administrative things I have to talk to you guys about. But uh, but with that, we are going to hear a word from our lovely sponsors and then get right into this awesome conversation with Mac Flavel, who is the 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 entertaining futurist. You'll get that joke when you listen to the episode. Uh, Mac Flavel. I am so excited to announce that this year, Overpriced JPEGs has partnered with OpenSea, the world's leading NFT marketplace built for everyone, creators, collectors, noobs, and experts alike. I'm an OpenSea user because they have the best selection of NFTs and a truly inclusive view of the ecosystem, supporting eight chains and eight global languages. I trust the systems they've put in place to keep the space safe, like copy mint protection, malicious URL detection and removal, robust verification, and more. It's why they are the place to buy, sell, and create NFTs. That's right. You know OpenSea, you use OpenSea, but did you know that OpenSea now has drops? New exclusive projects launch every week from top projects and creators, and you can check them out now using the link in the show notes. They also recently introduced self-serve drops, which is in beta, and allows creators to launch their projects right on OpenSea. This drops product gives creators access to tools like rich storytelling drop pages, multi-chain support, and drop mechanic customization. The full launch for self-serve drops is coming this spring. So check out the upcoming drops on OpenSea right now using the link in the show notes and own what moves you. You'll also be supporting the show in the process. Let me introduce you to a brand new company that I could not be more excited about, Web3Sense. 
a Web3 analytics platform that combines on-chain data with social media insights to give you the deepest, most meaningful intelligence into any NFT community. I have tested other analytics platforms out there, but Web3Sense has the most comprehensive capabilities I've seen in the NFT ecosystem. They apply sophisticated data science to wallet histories to determine behavioral patterns and help shape predictive analytics. In other words, they can tell you which Twitter accounts are actually the influencers in your space. And they can tell you what resonates most within a community by looking at what other communities token holders are involved in. The number of use cases here is virtually unlimited. So whether you're a trader, creator, institution, brand, agency, I promise Web3Sense has data that you want to see with the deep and actionable insights that you need to build, analyze, grow, start, whatever you want to do within the NFT space and in terms of building a business and a community. Now, they are still in very early days, so they're eager to connect with the community. So if you're interested in learning more about what Web3Sense can do for you and your business, and you should be, go and fill out the very short form linked to in the show notes, and someone from their team will reach out with more information and an opportunity for a product demo. Trust me, you won't regret it. Mac, welcome back. Third time on Overpriced JPEGs. What an honor. Third time for you. That's true. That's absolutely (laughs) profound. You know what's fun? You were our third guest ever on Overpriced JPEGs, and now this is your third appearance on Overpriced JPEGs. You're always fun to have on. You always have hot takes, right or wrong. They are hot. What is your take right now on the market? How are you vibing? What are you feeling? I mean, I don't really know. I don't pay super close attention to the markets. I don't really care what the market is doing at any point. The last two NFTs I've bought are worth less than they were when I bought them. If, like, if, if the, what were what were the two NFTs? I bought one called Momo. Have you seen the Momo stuff? Yeah, yeah. The Momo, Fug- G- Momo Goro or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's Those like excite a, yeah. me. Uh, it's an impressive team. It is an impressive team. And I talked to them a long time ago. Like over a year ago, and some people used to work with us, work with them, and I really like the people over there. Maureen, who's in charge, is a um, very inspiring woman, and so um, I think there's, I think, I think it's really neat. Uh, and they, they were have, like a post reveal kind of dump, right? Like that was what happened, was sort of after reveal, not dump, but you know, you had some that really did well, and then the floor price kind of cratered. As it's not entirely uncommon after a reveal. I, to be honest, I it was not um, that trend in the market behavior was not tied to the reveal. I would say it was already on oh. that pattern, and I really like, you know, confessions of an NFT or, or something. I don't spend any time in Discord. I dislike Discord. I think yeah. lots of us are at that point. I don't spend any time in Discord. For the first time in a long time, I went and watched the Momo Discord for the last couple of days, and I have been passively watching it and. Uh, and it's been interesting. Um, it's an incredible team. I'm very excited about the long-term nature of what they're building. I think the art is beautiful. Uh, and I imagine that the market will come around and realize that this is something big and something interesting and something worth playing with. But the descent in the floor price, of which I give probably zero fucks, is not tied to the reveal, I would argue. It was pre-reveal. And then- really. I could have sworn it started to really take a dive at some point around the reveal. Okay. No. Nope. That's interesting. So and then here's here's my other question. So what were the vibes in the Discord? You said they were good? Good vibes? Um, there was... So, oh God, I didn't want to talk about this. I have like something that resembles post-traumatic stress, which is probably misusing that word, and I do not mean to undermine people who are really dealing with that. But the Stoner Cats launch was really, really hard. It really was. Like, for many days, we slept for, you know, two or three hours a oh, night. Oh, I remember all of that, people yeah. people were very mean and very rude and da-da-da. Um, and some people who worked with us in Discord then now work with Momo. And I've been watching them go through it. And I, like, my stomach tightened and my heart started to hurt as I watched them going through people being really mm. shitty again. But, but, I feel like it turned around real quick. Like, there was okay. sort of two nights of just, like, shitlords being shitlords, a behavior I profoundly do not understand. I really don't. Like, hey, I just bought this thing, and now I'm going to talk a bunch of trash, making sure that nobody else would want to buy this. Oh, it's really confusing to me. Like, that whole argument that we are economic, rational maximizers, which is how some people define sort of human behavior patterns, I 
utterly reject. NFTs are proof that we are not economic rational maximizers. 100%. Uh, yeah, like we've, assigned, we've, we've aligned incentives now to go like champion this project and instead you get a bunch of people who will do nothing but FUD the project. You know, the, there's such a difference when, when Stoner Cats launched and if there's anybody who, I don't know, maybe there's people who have joined us since the Stoner Cats stage, right? Like that was a big deal. It was Ashton Kutcher. It was Mila Kunis. It was, you know, it was this animated series that had all these Vitalik like, was a voice. Backing. Oh, Vitalik was a voice. Oh my God, of course. That was such a big deal. And it was, I mean, it was in kind of the froth of the froth. It was like the summer of 21, right? It was. Like it was was it was so in the peak of just like the kind of mania and it was it was still early though and so people were still figuring out what all the stuff was so i feel like you guys bore a brunt of people still trying to figure out what nfts were you know how to make number go up like all i still have my stoner cats by the way i'm a i'm a lifer i'm a hodler i guess i'm a diamond hander on my on my stoner cats uh just a, a fun moment in history um Okay, last thing I want to say, because since we since we dived onto the, the the Momo stuff, I think what's interesting, and I, I haven't dove deep enough into the project, so I, people know I love Akutar, right? And I think yeah. one of the areas that, like, I think Akutar has such incredible long term potential, and I continue to believe in them so wholeheartedly in terms of, uh, I think amazing IP. I totally see the vision of it being a movie. I think where they have struggled, and I say that, but I don't think they're really trying to play this game, is they haven't, like, done the good, like, hype cycle stuff on, like, Twitter and, and social. Momo, you know, there, is it Bao Bao Studios? That's the name of the, the company around so, it? Yeah. Which has, like, a bunch of former Disney folks. I mean, like, it's a really similarly, like, talented group of people who know how to build IP. The question to me is, can that team, does that team know how to play hype cycles? Are they trying to play hype cycles? Or are they just going to go try and build their, their nice IP? And that means that who knows what will happen with the NFTs over the next X number of months. I refuse to believe that hype cycles matter. Mm. Like if you're if you're if you are talking about generational businesses, if you're talking about IP that matter for years or decades, then the hype cycle doesn't matter to me. Like we, you really you do have to have people your to think the NFT matters when the IP gets big, though. And maybe that happens inevitably or maybe it doesn't. And that's the question to me. Right. Is like, yeah. you know, I'm totally bought in to like go build Disney you know, and and don't follow every trend that you need to in the NFT space. But you still need, once you're Disney, I think you do owe it to your holders to have, have made it so like the NFTs matter to the people who now love all your Disney characters. And and what is that balance? I don't know. Agreed. A strong agreed. You don't want to be like, oh, hey, we made those NFTs. We built this massive thing and forget you. Like we've moved yeah. on. I don't think that's it. I just think that building that massive thing is immensely difficult. Um, very, very unlikely to succeed. And if you buy into a project and expect the people behind the project to take on this Herculean, nearly impossible task of making something massive, and that's what you want them to do. You want their eye on the horizon, and then you're like, oh, where's my companion drop this month or whatever? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's only totally so much can be other. done. There's yes. only so much yes. time in the day. And so you as a holder or as a community need to decide um, what you care about the founders optimizing for. And for me... Yeah. That will always be, again, I've sold like three NFTs in my life. I've bought hundreds, probably not thousands. I've, I've not bought thousands. I've bought hundreds and hundreds of NFTs. I still buy NFTs. I bought one yesterday. I bought one two days ago, but I don't sell them. I don't care about the market trends. I don't care about these things. I buy art that I like. Occasionally I buy projects from people that inspire me. And I'm hoping that um, these are really cool someday. And if not, I have cool. badass so, art. Let me tell you about the market trends then. Mac, in this, Please. in this Please. beginning portion of the episode, yeah, yeah, which is, I think I'm like, I'm like back in it a little bit now. I mean, it feels like a bull market again. Like I, we've been saying for a while, like what a, you know, obviously it's like a, it's a funky moment of the bear. I'm not saying that, I don't know how long this will last. I mean, it's clearly blur enabled this whole thing. This whole market yeah. is just like riving a wave of blur. And um, we're going to talk a lot about that in a newsletter we have coming out on Tuesday because I think it's fascinating, but I'm like really, I'm really interested in this. And I think Momo is an interesting example. I mean, think of Momo launching I don't know, five months ago, like it would have been dead. Like nothing, people weren't buying into new projects. There was nothing going on. And now you have projects selling out again and you're having these like funky waves. I mean, uh, you know, we've got like the Owl ASCII project yeah, that comes yeah. out of nowhere, stealth pops. Like it feels like we're back in that, that territory. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's never been the game I'm good at either. Like I'm not a, a flipper at all, you know, but I, I really enjoy observing this and kind of watching it all. And, uh, oh, Gitcoin Presents, Gavin, who's, who's, uh, lurking in the background here, my producer, we were talking about Gitcoin Presents, which speaking of Vitalik, rode this wave off of some speculation that like Vitalik was involved in it when really, I think the the mint was just off of, the mint was like based on a paper that Vitalik had contributed to years ago. And it's sort of like a, 
a feel good thing or whatever. Anyway, it's just, it's, uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate that things feel like they're alive again and that like you're just having like crazy market dynamics. Again, really, I think a lot largely influenced by the, it, it, almost entirely influenced, I think, by by people just wanting to find any any way to farm uh, tokens on Blur or, you know, airdrop farm. But, uh, but it's fun. So I'm enjoying it. It is fun. And I might argue it doesn't matter. It is not sustainable. This is not oh, yeah. why we stick around. And like, if this is, if... If we spasm a body with blur and it shocks life, we're like, oh shit, there's movement. And it's like, yes, as long as you have blurry electricity applied to the chest, but how long, you know, how much electricity does blur have to pump into that corpse through those paddles? Strong agree. I totally agree. Though I, I think they have more electricity than we think. I mean, I'm, I'm totally with you. And, and this is, I have a very, I'm very strongly in the camp of, as of right now, it does not appear that you know what blur's well, obviously what blur's trying to do right now is not sustainable in the sense that you cannot drop airdrops for the rest of your life right um but even in terms of the volume that they're doing like n- none of that to me is sustainable or will be sustained uh but but i think they may have a like i think this airdrop too could they could prolong this for the entire rest of this year so we'll see we'll see what happens i mean people will start to like get fatigued we're already starting to see that a little bit i think there's been a little bit less airdrop farming than there was right after the fed 14th drop for example uh because people just get fatigued like you can't just spend every single day like <laughs> you know farming farming the stuff but uh but, well, but uh, also as this as this this doesn't have to last forever right the rest of the world yeah. is not static and normal if blur keeps electricity on the body for a while and then a doctor comes by and is like oh i could actually solve the problem or something or like other you know like there's the, the world is dynamic all sorts of smart people are working on all sorts of smart interesting things and all of those will be thrown at this market um, over time. This is the question, and this is a rabbit hole that I could go down with you for the next 30 minutes, which is like, who is that doctor? What does that look like? And what does that mean specifically for Blur? But I'm not going to do that because we have this great news that are coming out on Tuesday where we get into a lot of this sort of like the future visioning and like what needs to happen, I think, for for Blur's vision to pan out. Yeah. Instead, I am going to turn us to the big story today. <laughs> ERC4337, the announcement that Vitalik made at ETH Denver that ERC4337, which I think has been essentially, he he first raised the, the uh, whatever, the prospect of this in like 2015. Hmm. And now it ha- it is essentially live. I, I don't think there's a way for you to really do, like it actually has to be kind of like built on now, but like the standard exists. exists. Uh, how much have you been tracking this and how excited are you about this? And we should also tell folks what this is. We should tell people what it is. Um, I don't pretend to be like anything like a futurist. I have very little ability. What are you talking? Dude, you say the <laughs> wildest shit on the show. You literally are like, I created Crypto Kitties. I have this like, I like very much see what consumers want. Like that's always been your thing. Do not pretend you're not a futurist. I will not apply that label to myself because I've never met anybody who applies that label to themselves that I like. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's not okay, a... Okay, fine. Uh, but you can call me that and I will like smile and be a little bit flattered and a little bit annoyed at the same time. Um, this seems like a big deal. This seems like a really big deal. This seems like it matters. This seems like this addresses some of the core issues that we've always talked about. And like, mm, I have some reasonably strong opinions about NFTs we may or may not get into and about what matters in the work that we've done over the last couple of years and what will matter. And some of the work happening here directly sort of contradicts maybe the direction I thought we're going in because it sounds like they're making Ethereum usable. Usable is a word, a great word. Uh, And that's a big, that's not... A big deal. That is the big deal. Like, this, is, is, this is the, the whole kit and caboodle. I mean, I, yeah. I totally agree. And and Gavin, again, who's lurking on this call here, it was like, has been like, you know, Carly, be, m- make sure you caveat and say like, you know, we ha- this actually has to be executed on still, which totally, but like, hot damn, this seems like a really big deal. Uh, uh, we haven't actually explained what this is yet. And there are people who may not know. I promise we will, we will break this down for you. But let me just quickly ask you, Mac, I'm not seeing that much about this on my Twitter timeline. Is that just me and the algorithm being weird? Are you seeing a ton about this? Are you, are you on Twitter? You always are on and off. off. You're not on Twitter. Again. I have no again. social media except be real. It's literally the only way that I talk to people on the internet is to be real. And like, <laughs> is, that a, is that a trend? Like are a lot of grown men on be real? I, I don't mean that. Uh, no shade, no shade. You know who is on Be Real? The uh, mafia that made NFTs. 
the Crypto Kitties. Sorry, not everybody, but the old like the school Axiom Dapper Zen, crew. The Axiom da- Zen. Old school Dapper crew. They, I, I have 11 friends on Be Real, and 10 of them worked at Axiom Zen. That's, and that's really like, funny. That's the whole thing. That's all I, I get a kick out of that. I got to tell you, I am not on Be Real, but maybe I should. I should start so I can hang out. It's with magical, you and I can tell you, I can tell you, my like Be Real plus the token idea, fucking solid. Oh, be, you get tokenizing Be Real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We have to get into that, but let's let's yeah, stay yeah. on let's stay, let's point, stay on topic. Let's point, stay on topic. I mean, I actually yeah. kind of am interested in that idea, but I'm not taking the bait because I want to talk about this. Okay. Yeah. ERC forty three thirty seven. So uh, just to break this down for folks, it's basically it's abs it's abstracted accounts. So it's basically you can have like a you know primary up here account, and then you have all the, you have these smart accounts. So you basically have smart contracts that facilitate transactions for you. I, I, I don't want to get into the technical specs because Lord knows I'm not qualified to get into the technical specs. What matters is what this enables. And I think there's four big things that I have been seeing people highlight that are, are really exciting. Uh, the first one is, um, I wouldn't say it's on the security side, but it's definitely on the ease of use side in terms of account recovery, enabling two-factor authentication, uh, things like I could make my lawyer or my dad or like, you know, give kind of multi-sig capacity so that if I lose my uh my key there's somebody else who can access the account and i'm not just like totally shit out of luck um there's also like some biometric stuff like you could log into accounts your account with with biometrics which as somebody turned off by biometrics on my phone because i found it to be like kind of hit or miss and also kind of pain in the ass i don't like this doesn't do all that much for me in terms of like the announcements this was actually the one i found least exciting um but i absolutely love there being more ways for people to have and secure ish secure ish their accounts yep. outside of just that damn seed phrase because we've always known that that's a huge it's hugely prohibitive it's ridiculous it's like okay i have to like store this thing in a safe you know like lock it under put it under a lock and key can't put I it have in a my metal phone, puck can't put it with on the cloud. passwords chiseled into it like that shit's not the future we that's, know that's not the future <laughs> I'm no futurist, but I well, can tell you it sure as shit, not this. Yes, yeah, there you yes. go. Okay, so there's that. Then there's also the ability now to sign multiple transactions at once, which is which is great. Again, like when you think like bundling transactions, essentially. So you're not like, okay, I approve this. And then I separately approve these other three things. Like, let's just like- It that took one me thing. a second on that though, to understand what matters about that. And that's not the thing of like, oh, I get to buy four NFTs at once. Mm. That's the thing of, I'm going to interact with a smart contract that is more than a minting contract. It has some sophisticated functionality and there may be a sequence of transactions that I would normally perform and I can bundle a sequence of transactions. I'll be honest, I read the Zeneca post that you sent me and so I'm like, I'm playing off Zeneca because he's a very bright man and this seems very effective. But that concept of even just like logging out as the final transaction, right? Like let me engage with your smart contract, let me do some financial transactions and then let me discommit from all of this in one smooth process. That sounds like the future. I'm I'm gonna make a future joke again, man. Right you keep saying I deserve stuff. it. I um, deserve it. Okay, I yes, the the we'll we'll link to the Zeneca post. Everyone should check it out. We love our we love our man Zeneca, and he did a great post on this. And I think the way you phrase that and and uh, is 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 perfect, right? It's about these sequence of events that you can bundle, not just like I can throw everything in a shopping cart and buy it in one click. Like it's 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 a little bit more involved than that. So you can read more about that on the Zeneca piece. But that's well well put. This next one. I don't know. I'm looking at this list. Might be the one I'm most excited about, which I feel like is probably nobody else's favorite. Um, subscriptions. Dude, I'm... Maybe it is everyone's favorite. I'm so pumped. You, this, I, And I don't know exactly how it's going to work, right? But essentially, you can enable like recurring payments through this smart wallet. And as somebody who has a newsletter that we literally just launched a paid version of that folks can now go and pay a subscription to. I would love that to be more crypto native. I want to be able to send everybody an NFT or a little PO app for every month that they renew their subscription, but I'm on Substack and it's not integrated and it's a mess and we're a little bandwidth constrained right now. So I'm not capturing everybody's everything to try and get them all PO apps right now. We will get there, but like in this moment, it's um it's a lot. And so something like this, I've also just like, I've said this, I think almost since the start of the show, which is the entire business world is obsessed with recurring revenue. And we in Web3 have spent the last year being like, buy this one thing once and you get lifetime benefits. And that's a bizarre business model that is never going to out, it's never going to win over a recurring revenue model. Guess what it's not? It's not not the future. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Subscriptions uh, are the future. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the reason they're the future is because of the present. You already said it. All business is obsessed with reoccurring revenue. Like, for the kids following along at home, 20 years ago, the internet happened, and somebody was like, what if we had software as a service? What if we had SaaS business models? And you now have, I don't want to say trillions, because I'm probably making that up, but like, Hundreds of billions of dollars that flows through things like Salesforce and everything else. I mean, almost all software I use is on a service model. A totally. Well, it's, all, it's, it's the move from I'm going to buy the Microsoft Office suite and it's going to come in a bunch of disks that I'm going to upload that I, you know, I pay once for it and then I have this access key to I pay whatever I pay monthly to my Google suite to upload an remember- endless amount of files onto Google Drive. Do you remember how awkward it was watching Photoshop try and like be this tool for creatives that no creative could afford? Like every yeah. single person going through school, literally every person going through school was using pirated copies of Photoshop. <laughs> and at one point, Adobe was like, oh, what if we just charge you $30 a month? And it's like, oh, shit. That, this, this, is, this is so huge. And I am enthralled with games. I always have been. Games mean more to me than they do to most people. Big Head is all making games now. This is what we're all in on, et cetera, et cetera. But the addition of subscription revenue to the mobile gaming ecosystem was huge. It it didn't replace in-app purchases. It didn't replace ads. But as somebody who's made games and added subscriptions and seen my revenue go significantly up on mobile games, it's very exciting for that reason. Like, subscriptions are a great way. And and I also go watch Reddit threads of normal people being like, I'm so fucking sick of subscribing to everything. Like, I don't Mm. want everything to be a subscription. You go... You spend time on Reddit threads railing against subscriptions. <laughs> Remember I said I use no social media? I don't comment on Reddit, but I watch Reddit. Reddit yeah, is yeah. intriguing to watch, but I only yeah. talk and be real. And yes, I watch people rally against subscriptions on Reddit, and it's mm. eye-opening. But, but, we live in a world where they think they're going to get their pumpkin spice latte through subscriptions, and that feels like a little bit much, and you can fucking ask Starbucks, and you probably will. But for a lot of businesses and for Web3 at the point that it is today, the ability for me to engage a community or just a customer, not everything needs to be a fucking community, through a subscription is a very powerful idea. It's amazing. I wish I, I really, I was trying to figure out a little bit more tactically how this is going to work. And I, 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 either I couldn't find it or the information isn't fully out there yet. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming in the next month, a couple weeks, we'll have a lot, we'll have more that we can really start to like tangibly put our hands on around yeah. all of this. But yes, if it's what we're sort of envisioning, I think it's, a huge, huge unlock that I am so stoked on. The last unlock here is uh, sponsored transactions, which uh, basically uh, meaning like if I'm going to launch a free NFT instead of it being like, but you pay gas, right? Which depending on where you are in the market cycle can actually be a lot of money. I remember like, you know, the the super, super bull, the the really popular like free mints. I mean, it was crazy. The gas would be like, you know, ten thousand dollars. You're like, well, this is absolutely bananas. Um, and so now the company could take that on, or the creator, right? And they can actually sponsor, like, pay the gas for you, and it could be a truly free mint. Um, yes, but no. I love that Ooh. concept. I love the pragmatism of it. We're building this new project called We Ones. We're putting it on Polygon. We are trying to bring it to Muggles. We're going to pay all of their gas fees. Absolutely. Like, we want to do that for them because we can afford to pay gas fees on Polygon and Matic. Loosely, it doesn't matter how big that scales. Within reason, we can afford to pay those. Okay. Um, but, so as much as I love this, like, oh, yeah, now a free drop is actually free. Or just other versions where you're like, oh, yeah, let me pay the gas, you know. Welcome to my white glove service. Welcome to my premium restaurant. We take care of our people. And, of course, we'll pay your gas. Come in, sit down, feel at home. I love all of that. But you can't fucking afford to do that on a free mint for, like, a bunch of people. If you're, you know, Especially on a free mint, the, the, the amount of resources that you must have in order to compensate people for the gas for your free mint. Like, if you're Yuga, sure. Most other people, including budding artists and stuff, how does this actually affect their ability to distribute their work? I would say they can't afford to. It's an interesting concept. The real world practical applications of it are less likely to matter. So it's so funny this is where your head went. Because it's it's where my head went to, like in a selfish way, just being like, oh my God, is this going to become the new expected standard? Yeah. And then like... I, you know, I have I no other NFTs shit. coming out in any time in the future, but, you know, who knows? And then, like, uh, the expectation is, like, if I want to do something free, like, I have to cover gas. So it's funny that you went there and you're right that maybe most people can't. Uh, uh, but for brands, like, I think this is an interesting in, – in in the theme of this entire announcement, which to me is, like, onboarding 
the masses, yeah. right? Or like building that infrastructure. Pepsi. Like it, I'm, I'm thinking about these massive brands who obviously can afford it, who can now really target their own audiences more than they maybe even could previously, rather than just like coming in and just trying to like take from the existing Web3 community and could offer actually free mints where like it's less confusing for the people because they just like come on, they don't even know what this gas thing is. They just come on, they like claim their thing for, but like that's where, that's the other place my head went. And then I was like, oh my God, does that trickle down? We're all, all expected to do this, not terrifying. But, um, but I am excited for what this could do for brands. Listen, we know we know that like the 1.4 million people who've ever installed MetaMask fucking trading JPEGs in circles is not interesting. And we're going to say it again. It is not the future. So to your point, if this uh, feature of this proposal allows brands to onboard new people, hell yeah, that's awesome. Let's do it. The, G- yeah. Gabe Layden has been big on like free NFTs of the future. Uh, And that's meaningful to me only because he like, you know, he cut his teeth in like the free to play gaming world. And I mean, we saw that with like the Super Bowl commercial, like his whole Twitter feed just looked like free to play ad spam. You know what I mean? Like gaming ad stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, I I do think purely free, truly free is like a very powerful thing. Yeah. Um, And I'm excited. Yeah, the word free has always been not ironic, but stupid in blockchain where it's like free plus gas. And we're like, oh, yeah. well, well, great. Like you've missed the psychological premise of free if you have to. Well, well, it's true, right? The difference between free and one penny is so much more than the difference between 98 and 99 cents. It's still one penny difference, but that psychologically, that is massive. And there was no free in blockchain. Loosely, yeah. I guess. Airdropped it a bit. By the way, as, a, as an aside, and maybe people are getting bored of this joke, but I'm just, before I forget, I, I really think we need to label this episode like, like futurist Mac, <laughs> futurist Mac Flavel on overpriced JPEGs. <laughs> Just really make that stick for you. Okay, let me ask you this. Is this bigger than the merge? If this works, if this like actually executes and it fulfills the the vision that we all have for what this means, is it bigger than the merge? Mm, probably. The merge, the merge is like, um. we switched, I don't know, what's the metaphor here? Nobody who doesn't really, really, really fucking care knows what the merge was or cares about the consequence of it. Like the expensive nerd computer thing is a little bit cheaper for the expensive nerds or something like it. There's no, there's, there's nothing there. You know, I used to sell cameras at Best Buy and sell the features, not the benefits. Uh, sell the benefits, not the features. I got that exactly backwards. Sell the benefits, not the features, right? And we'd be like, oh, you can take better pictures of your grandkids' birthday parties. Not, oh, now you have a four megapixel camera. This was a while ago. We were selling four megapixel cameras. But um, the the benefits of the merge are not really easy to highlight different. Better, like, it's a more efficient blockchain and efficiency is generally a net positive and it's economically more accessible because it is efficient. Sure, that sounds like some nerd economic professor bullshit versus like, no, no, Pepsi's bringing a million people now. Right. That, that, okay. The iPod, the iPod moment, as as we talk about, it, I feel like a lot in this space. Uh, I think this I could be that. I agree. I think. I mean, look, both are essential in many ways, right? Like, I don't think you can't have the future we all want without either of these things. So, in that way, it's sort of a stupid question because both, I think, are, yeah. are critical. And, um, but yeah, I mean, the merge was just so nerdy. I mean, the environmental thing is 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 a huge. It was like we were. It, the merge feels defensive. This feels offensive somehow. You know, like the merge was like, let's fix what's like kind of wrong and the criticism is being leveled at us. This is like, we're going to go out and get you. You know what I mean? Like we're going to go out and get the customer and we're going to like bring you on. And like that feels psychologically very different. Well, and and like, as you said, it's not one or the other. And there's a bunch of other things that need to happen and have happened, et cetera. But to your point, clean your fucking house before you invite your guests over. And this is a moment <laughs> we're inviting our guests over and our house is clean, maybe. I mean, it's not, but it's yeah, yeah. cleaner than it was. Uh, and that's 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 good. Yeah. Now now we can have our guests over. Maybe soon we'll invite food people actually want to eat, not just like overpriced fucking monkey brains like an Indiana Jones movie. Oh, that yeah. Weird. Uh... <laughs> Am I gonna have to? I, I might have to rename. You know, overpriced, <laughs> underpriced JPEGs. I've joked about that before in bear markets, but it you know we, we might be starting to get to that that rebrand if we really start to have our millions of more users coming coming into the space. The moment we've been waiting for. We really haven't been waiting that long either. I feel like we're all so impatient in this. And you've been in this space for a long time, so you know you're like, honey, 
<laughs> honey, honey, honey. <laughs> oh, I've seen some shit. <laughs> we are all students. We're all students. Sure, sure. Y'all know I love Ledger, the world leader in critical digital asset security. When you own crypto, what you actually own is a private key that gives you access to your coins. It is imperative that you keep this key safe and Ledger wallets are the best way to do that. The Nano S Plus and Nano X Ledger wallets paired with the Ledger Live app give you the best way to start your crypto journey while maintaining full control over your digital assets. Send and sign your NFT transactions with full transparency in the Ledger Live app. What you see is what you sign. And y'all have heard me talk about Ledger Stacks before. Well, due to unprecedented demand, Ledger has received all the Ledger Stacks pre-orders that it can fulfill through summer 2023. And so they have decided to pause the pre-orders. Ledger is incredibly grateful for the community's support and is working hard to get current pre-orders out and ready to ship so that they can make even more Ledger Stacks to keep your digital assets secure. Sign up for the Ledger Stacks waitlist and be the first to know when Ledger Stacks are available again for pre-orders. But don't leave your digital assets susceptible to breach or hack in the meantime, order your Nano S Plus or Nano X today by visiting shop.ledger.com or clicking the link in the show notes. I want to tell you something about Gabe that isn't directly related to this, but it's just one of Great, my favorite stories in the entire universe. And so I want to tell you about it. And while you're doing this, while we're off track, do you want to tell me your tokenized be real idea? Yeah, yeah. You guys can cut this all after if it sucks, whatever. Uh, here's two things. One, so I don't actually know that it's about Gabe, but I think it is. He's this, he was the CEO of Machine Zone, right? Yeah. So I used to hear this story about the CEO of Machine Zone. And when he would hire game designers, he would say, somebody wants to spend a million dollars in our game. Somewhere there's somebody who's willing to spend a million. Have I told you the story? Somebody's willing to spend. No, he's said this on a podcast. Keep going. Okay. Okay. Somebody's willing to spend a million dollars in our game. Um, what feature are you going to design when I hire you that allows this to be possible? And the answer was the crown. And whatever player buys the crown, every other character in game loses control of their avatar when the person wearing the crown walks by and they turn and they bend a fucking knee. And every single person in the game bows to you as he walks by. That is what a real whale would pay for in whatever game Machine Zone was making at the time. That has always stuck with me. It's very, very interesting. And that that guy who was asking that question, like I heard this story years and years ago, that that guy ends up being super big into free-to-play NFTs, there's no surprise here. You can, you can connect these dots and see how that plays can, out can very you quickly. Connect that dot. So I, Gabe has told this story on a podcast before. Mm, okay. I did not hear... He said that he used to run that test. He may not have t told the crown thing. Mm. I, I heard him say this on a podcast, and I think he just... I just heard him say that he would give this... This would be a question he would ask in interviews. And I don't remember the end to it, which may have been that, or maybe he didn't give an end, like maybe he didn't give the answer. What, explain that, because people just like play games, to, to the whales play games to feel big. I don't understand. Because outside of the economic flip of I'm trying to get rich with NFTs, it encapsulates everything that people who currently buy NFTs care about. It is the status. ultimate PFP. It is status. It is okay. status embodied in a single thing in such a way that every single person has to literally bend a knee, which is like an expression, but also means acknowledge your superiority. And every person you encounter. Now, personally, I would feel fucking weird if I was walking <laughs> through a game and every turn and bent. I'd be very uncomfortable and I would turn the game off and I'd be like, no, let's not do that again. I just stirred a bunch of things in me that I don't want to deal with. But there is a different ego um, first personality that would love that. And that that flex, the, it's drippy. My kids, everything's drippy these days. That's drippy as shit. That's the drippy as shit you can do. Uh, and literally accomplishes so many goals of the NFT if you reject it, like most of these communities aren't communities, but they are status-seeking behavior and room to flex. And the whole reason we have hexagon PFPs and everything is so that you can prove it's not that you're like smarter or cooler. It's that you spent mm -hmm. more money on a fucking picture than okay. anybody else. That's an in-game item. I'm with you. Okay, I, I, get the, I get the connection now. I'm into it. Yeah, Gabe's a character. I'm, I'm honestly, you know, I feel he's polarizing, but I'm really glad he's in the space because I think he does, he does interesting things. He says interesting things. He pushes things in different directions and he like pushes boundaries, which I appreciate. Um, okay, give me 30 seconds on Be Real with tokens. Do people know so, what Be Real is? Basically at like a certain time, a day, it pings you and says you have to take a picture now and you just take a picture on of your selfie and a picture outwards and you never know when that's going to come. So the point is like, you can't, you can't 
signal in the same way. It's right? the like, anti Instagram. There's no filters. There's no sex appeal. You don't know when it's coming. The vast majority of my B reels are people's computer monitors because I work have. 11 nerds on be real like we all do this for a living the number of fucking zoom shots right it's it is incredibly intimate in an incredibly uncool way and 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 like it is the kind of content that i never ever ever want to see from almost everybody on earth period if you're on my inner trust circle i want to be ambiently aware of you in the way that only this allows in this really casual way and there's a couple things that make be real really cool one is that there's no stream every day I get all the pictures from everybody as they upload them, but the next day they're all wiped out. There's no doom scrolling. There's no infinite content. I literally get 11 pictures a day. It's almost like developing a photo reel like in the old days and being excited to see those 11 photos and then moving on. Uh, the thing I want to do with Be Real is I want to tokenize it because the only thing that I get to keep in Be Real, the only record are my own photos. So I can see mm -hmm. my own shit for all time, but nobody else's. But what would be fun is if I was like, man, that Gavin guy is cute. I'm going to put three banana coins to buy his Be Real today because it's a nice selfie. Oh, he comes back up. That was amazing. I hope y'all are watching the video. Uh, and Carly's like, no, he is cute, but he's my cute. Back the fuck off. And so you bid four banana coins in order to own that picture of the day. Like, I see a lot of interesting code, weirdly, happening on Be Real because people will screenshot shit that they're working on. And I saw something yesterday where I was like, holy fuck, this, this is going to map. Not like this is going to change the world, but just like this is a very cool project. I know the developer. I've seen the last two things he's done. He used to work with us. This thing's going to be huge. I would like to buy that. I would like to, I would like to grab that thing. And so if you could just um, be, you know, and I'll give you one banana coin every day for showing up and I'll give you two for liking something, but you spend them to buy people's stuff. That's interesting. I have a that third version of this I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to tell you about the, the adult version. Because you're going to do it one day and you don't want people to steal it. You did nah. that last time you were on the pod. You were like, what was it? It was like a, it was like minimum floors. You were like, I want to build a project that has like a guaranteed like floor buy brack. So basically it like creates a minimum floor. I was floor told I was going to go to jail if I built it. Got it. Well, also, after you came on, somebody was like, oh, this this project is already doing that and like tweeted at you and me. And anyways, because you had Twitter back then. Okay. Um, I'm really into that. I mean, I, I wonder if it sort of runs counter to the whole be real ethos, which is sort of like to not get you more addicted. It's supposed to be like not getting you addicted to being on this app and doing things and like making it any social signal. It's supposed to be all the not of that. But uh, but I totally see it. And I, I, I honestly, I need to just, this makes me want to download Be Real. If you do, find me on there. Okay, I totally will. You'll get lots of pictures, you know, no code on mine, but you'll just get like pictures of like words on my Word app or whatever, you know, my screen. Okay. Um, wrap <laughs> my words on my Word app. <laughs> Your word I mean, app. Google Docs <laughs> is what I, what was the word I was looking for. Um, wrapped punks on blur. I wanted to talk about the story in some ways with you because it's fun to me. Well, I think it's interesting, first of all, and then it, obviously the very fact that you have to wrap punks is because they came around before the ERC-721 standard was developed, which of course you were intimately familiar with because you had the idea of CryptoKitties and then that's what led to the ERC-721 standard. So just thought this would be a fun conversation to have with you. I have some other thoughts, but um, have you been tracking this story about wrapped punks on Blur? Um, I know that it's happening. I know that there seems to be a lot more transaction volume around punks because this is possible. That's not surprising. If you have more stores in which you can buy an item, then you're more likely to sell an item that, you know, that seems sort of like. Well, I think what's so important here is it feels like such a representation of the moment because wrapped punks had actually been on OpenSea. They were on FTX. Like they've been on other marketplaces before and it didn't do anything in part because the Larva Labs marketplace has zero royalties. So like it always just made more sense to trade these on the Larva Labs marketplace. Also, because I think punks have clearly entered this place of like just store of value. I mean, they've been so stable that Sam uh, from Proof on Proof Daily has been talking about this, like Punks hasn't had a 10% move. I don't know if this is still true now, maybe with on Blur that's changed, but like up until very recently, the, the floor price of Punks hadn't moved more than 10% in like 229 days or something bananas with when you compare it to any other like major project, nobody comes close to that, right? So they had sort of entered this just like store of value phase and the Larva Labs marketplace was where it made the most sense to do any transacting. And so being on these other marketplaces didn't do anything. Being on OpenSea didn't do anything. Being on FTX didn't do anything. This is like this moment because the liquidity and the incentivization that's happening on Blur means like everything is sort of going bananas and everybody's looking for a way to trade. And so that's why having wrapped punk suddenly appear on Blur, now there's actually activity there and it's just another thing for people to be able to trade and, and airdrop farm. And you basically uh, 
Punk OTC, is that what his name is? Anyway, what, yeah, whatever he is, who's like- The big punk you know, guy. Been, yeah, who's been involved in like, I think it was like 41% of like all punk trades in the last like year or something this guy was in some way or another facilitating a part of. And he he's the one who basically started wrapping them onto Blur and was like, great, why don't I just, all these trades that I've already been doing, why don't I now just get Blur? Give me my free internet this? money. Yeah, give, yeah, give me give me my made up give give me my made up money. So, um, so that that was really interesting to me was just to see, and it also feels reflective of this moment because it, there, I think there's a very real question and debate around how much of what's happening on Blur is real. I think clearly the vast majority of it is not real. There's probably some percentage of this that will linger past the incentivization stage and to the point we made at the top of this show. Like, who knows how long they're going to be able to keep this gravy train running, which could mean any number of, of different things in terms of like what happens in the next 12 to 24 months for NFTs broadly. Um, but right now, like this is a perfect encapsulation of like why this isn't real because without these incentives, punks wouldn't be trading on there, right? Punks, as soon as the incentives stop, punks will go back to trading on, on Larva Labs in all likelihood because it will stay 0% royalties forever, probably. And Blur cannot. They at some point need to turn a fee on and make money. And so all of this kind of goes away um, but for right now, they're able to manufacture a crazy amount of, of energy. Um, so I thought I thought that was interesting. Um, so, okay, this is the point I wanted to make on punks, which I, I've been reflecting on recently, because I want a punk. Like if, like of all like the blue chips that I want to buy, like, man, I would love to just have a punk. And I think what's, I think it's interesting because I think back to when apes were really kind of first taking off, I, I guess like probably October 21 around like NFT NYC punk, punk uh, apes were however many months old at that point. And there was a lot of like, meh, like, like annoyance in the punk community feeling like, oh, look at everything apes are doing. Because apes was sort of like getting close to flipping punks and like, oh, the ape whole, like Yuga cares so much about their community and is throwing these parties and is doing these things for them. And punk and Larva Labs won't do anything for us. And, and I was sort of like, oh, I don't know, like Larva Labs is falling behind. And in hindsight, what a brilliant move on Larva Labs piece to be like, we're not playing that game. Like we are historical art. We are store of value. We will do nothing. And that is where the value is in the historical nature. Because the second they started to be like, we're going to throw a party, the second they like did any of that, now they were playing that game and they were stuck on that treadmill, which is a very hard treadmill to be on. And I think Apes is in some ways the only one that has like emerged and not that they've emerged yet. We still have a long, long way to go, but like has sort of been able to maintain that game. Um, I think Doodles does an okay job of it too. Uh, yeah, but but Doodles has definitely had the ups and downs and the crazy. So, you know what I mean? Like Doodles yeah. gets a lot of fud. There's a lot of frustration that they weren't on social media enough. Like they've had a lot of. There's a lot of frustration with that team. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with all that frustration. In fact, historically, I've very much defended Doodles, and I largely don't agree with a lot of it. But, um, but they've had that. They've had that ride in some ways. I think more than Yuga has. I, the um, non futures here is about to tell you that Doodles is the future. That shit. That shit is very much what. I don't think that most of the NFT projects that we talk about 10 years from now exist today. Um, and I think the vast majority of NFT projects that exist today will exist only by the letter of the law. Like they will be a thing on the blockchain and nobody will give a fuck. Um, Doodles will be one of the very, very few exceptions to that. I love it. I've, I've always been a, a Doodles fan. We have our, I'll plug, we have our event coming up March 30th in person in Miami with Julian Holguin, the CEO of Doodles. We're going to really get deep on like what is the vision there, mistakes, successes, learnings, like go deep. If you have an OPJ NFT, you can join us on March 30th in Miami. I've been looking for a reason to go to Miami. Oh, uh, March 30th, dude, come. Okay. You you have an, you have an OPJ NFT because you were a guest since so you got airdropped one. I know. Um, you didn't get multiples for being a guest multiple times, though. Interesting. No. Mm. Okay. I want to talk about we ones. So let's talk about the latest happenings at uh, at Big Head Club. And, you know, you and I have caught up from time to time over the, you know, year and a half or two years, whatever it's been. And I just respect you so much because we've talked so many times where you were like, I'm being patient. Like, I'm not rushing into the next thing. So the fact that you guys are doing something, launching something, I'm like, all right, Mac has decided it's time. Because you were really, like, you launched Stoner Cats. You had, I'm, tr I'm trying the name of the Japanese project. Oni Ronin. Oni Ronin. Beautiful. You, you had Ghostbusters. Like, you did some projects. And then you're like, all right, we're going to pause and, like, really figure out what we want to do. So tell us about We Ones. Um, we Ones is, what is We Ones? We Ones is a bunch of things. We Ones is my, 
uh, magnum opus. We Ones is me trying to fix CryptoKitties. Remember, I've told the story that when we made CryptoKitties, somebody wrote a blog post. This weird little Vietnamese team wrote a blog post called CryptoKitties was almost perfect. Here's the three things they got wrong. And we read that shit and we were like, these nerds, they're fucking cute. <laughs> uh, those nerds were called Sky Mavis and what they built was Axie Infinity. It was literally a direct response to CryptoKitties. And at the time, we were very dismissive. And, you know, that's because we're fucking dumb. Um, this is my own response. I mean, Axie has had, you know, you could probably write a couple of things about the three things Axie did wrong. Yeah, let's yeah, not, yeah, let's totally, not totally, pretend totally. that they got it perfect. No, they didn't get it perfect. But if you're looking at, like, you know. Right. Significance, Axie, right. say all the trash you want about Axie. Axie matters. Axie, Axie had an impact on what we all did. Um, we ones is my own response to CryptoKitties. We ones is like, how would we make this work better? And a big thing about CryptoKitties was that it was designed in its beginning to be for everybody. It was supposed to be accessible. And I remember being in this exact house that I'm in right now and getting the phone call that we just sold a cat for $30,000. And I actually stumbled to the side. Like I was on my phone and I <laughs> fell over on the wall. This had not happened before. Every, remember that a month before that, I bought a CryptoPunk for $35. Like this, this thing that everybody who's listening to this knows that you spend lots of money on JPEGs on the internet. That was not true in 2017 uh, when we sold it cap for $30,000 and the next day for $100,000, which was interesting and like led to so many things and blah, blah, blah. But it did not um, include anybody. It was, it's rich white guys circle jerking each other. It's basically NFTs at this point for the most part. And that's not interesting. Like, oh, my, my impact, my legacy on the world is weird degen bros get to like degen with each other. That's not really something that I want to put on my tombstone. Uh, so the idea that NFT should be economically accessible means a lot to me, like a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. That's one idea. Two is that NounsDAO is fucking amazing. It really, really is. But again, they're fifty thousand dollars each or some ridiculous shit. Like once a day drops at that price. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the other thing that I love, oh, I'm not going to show you this video, but I love Lego assemblable mini Lego figures, like specifically the figures. I don't really buy the sets, the big things. I just like the characters. So we ones is sort of like. Um, I describe CryptoKitties as the intersection of I want to build a gardening game, you should use cats, and I bought a CryptoPunk for $35. And those three things were like, oh shit, we should make CryptoKitties. And now it's NounsDAO, and it's Lego minifigures, and it's economic accessibility, and we have Wii ones. So we're going to drop blind bags of accessible characters. Um, instead of like Lego where you're like, oh, I got the cowboy, and I got the ballerina, and I got the dominatrix, we're like, no, no, you have the cowboy head and the ballerina body and the dominatrix boots in this bag, and that one got that bag. So now what are you going to do? Oh, you're going to go trade with each other. You're going to go try, if you want to, to collect them all. Like, we have eight characters that we've said, here's the recipe. If you want the official cowboy, you have to assemble these pieces, which you can do. Or you can be like, no, no, I want to, like, there's this cute guy at school, and so I'm going to build a wee one that looks just like that cute guy at school because that's how I want to express. I'm not here to catch them all. I'm here to collect and express. Uh, we had both of these options available in CryptoKitties through Fancy Cats and Normal Cats. We bring that to Wee Ones. Um, my the, the hill that I'm going to die on, my controversial opinion these days, is that NFTs don't matter if they don't get consumed through in-app purchases on your mobile device. Hold on. Let me process that. NFTs don't matter if they don't get consumed through in-app purchases. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So as in, and when you say consumed, as in like if I'm not getting an NFT mobily in in a, in an unrelated app or like uh, unrelated meaning it doesn't have, it's not like an NFT thing like I'm not Correct. on OpenSea. Wow, that's a yeah. bold statement. Yeah, that's the hill I'm gonna die on. I'm gonna bet my whole company on this shit. Oh, even with like the thirty percent take rate of apples and things. Doesn't thirty percent of hundreds of millions of consumers or one point four million people who are jealous they don't have a monkey. You choose which one looks like the future. Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay, wait. So, 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 okay. So, 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 okay. Now, 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 do the follow on as to what this means for We Ones. What this means for We Ones is we are going to uh, sell We Ones in mobile apps. Uh, a mobile app where you can come and collect them all. And there may be a step three to 10 of this journey that I'm not going to talk about now because I don't want to do the thing where you like make up false promises of the future. But what I want to do is sell um, 10 million $3 NFTs. I don't want to sell million dollar NFTs. I don't even want to sell $10,000 NFTs. The number of people who can afford to buy $10,000 NFTs 
are incredibly uninteresting to me. You do not have impact on this world that matters when you serve the ultra-privileged by allowing them to be more privileged. If you take this technology that we've created and you bring it to the masses, and to be clear, like, I love art. I mean, I literally buy these NFTs and shit all the time. I don't know any normal human being who fucking buys art. This idea that NFTs are going to change the world because you can buy art that you don't even look at because you haven't figured out how to consume it. Like, that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I'm thrilled that my artist friends are making money based on this technology, but it's not changing the world. Whereas, and I'm aware of the irony that decentralization and everything that matters about decentralization to succeed must go through the gates of Steve Jobs' fucking ghost goddamn door. I'm aware of the frustrations here. It's also the only thing that matters. That guy won. Android followed him. They won. Millions and millions and millions of people make digital transactions on their phone with their face to unlock that shit every day. And there's no other real digital distribution that matters. And I know that Steam is kind of a big deal, but it's not a big, big deal. Okay. So I'm super, I'm super interested in this. Is the, and I know you've got steps three through 10 that probably answer this more than maybe steps one and two do, but like, is the, the initial target is like collectors and and Farmville players who want like little activities to do that aren't really like competitive. It's like, it's like, this is fun and little and a piece of identity and I can collect and put funny little things together. That's what, that's the appeal. The, it's the avatar, it's the Reddit avatars. Uh, or the, no. Uh, Reddit avatars. It, it feels like it's touching a similar thing of like, oh, this is fun. I can like put a little character together or like Farmville, like I can click a plot of land. Like this isn't a skill-based game. This isn't like, you're not doing anything. It's like nope, LOL surprise dolls, which people know I'm really into because it's, I love crypt toys. Like what, I mean, you know, I just conceptually, I think that's, Clearly, there's proof of that. It's that. Uh, it is all of that. It is also dropped in multiple series. So season one, series one, is only going to last a week. And the nouns I referenced, by the way, was that the... So how do you match supply and demand? I think the okay. fucking NFT drop model is fucked. This like, oh, we have to sell it 10,000 things and get it super hyped and then have a gas war and that's considered success. And that's the only measure of success that this industry uses. is bizarre. Note my admiration of nouns now. Remember that CryptoKitties, we launched a new cat every 15 minutes for a year, 96 cats a day for a year. So we're doing open editions for 10 minutes a day for at like, say, nine o'clock oh. in the morning for 10 minutes. Anybody can come buy these packs and then it closes down. And that happens for one week. That is season one. And then that's the entire supply of season one that will be made available. We'll hold on to some ourselves. Uh, and the reason we'll hold on to some ourselves is because of the Black Lotus problem. So in Magic the Gathering, the original super OP card was the Black Lotus. And the myth goes, I've been told this isn't true, but I like the story so much I pretend it's true. The, the myth goes that somebody, so Black Lotus was this card, it was wildly overpowered, it had incredible art, and somebody tried to sell it on eBay for $20,000. And Wizards of the Coast saw that and was like, if we ever see any card on sale on eBay for these kinds of numbers, we will flood the market with that card. We will destroy the value of this. And all of the NFT DJs are losing their shit right now. Like, founders, don't do that. That's the worst fucking idea ever. Except that um, Magic the Gathering is like a $100 million business a year 30 years later. If you are trying to build things that last, if you remember we talked before about like hype cycles versus building things that matter and that last, these are the kinds of decisions that make things last. So I can tell you one part about this that I'm excited about because it's fucking weird, a little controversial perhaps. <laughs> I don't think any of our work matters if the muggles don't get into it. You, you you buy these things on your phone, you love them, you trade them, eventually you're playing with them, eventually there's games being built around them, other people are building games around them, sure, all of that's really cool. But um, if I have to start on the mobile device, then I have to start by building a marketplace and all this shit. And that's really hard. And I don't want to start there. I want to prove that the characters matter. I want to prove that the concept matters. I want to prove that daily editions in seasons, multiple seasons, I want to prove that all of this matters. And the best market to test that with are the DJs. It's people who understand how this all works. And here's the problem with the DJ community. We open talking about stoner cats and Momo and all the speculators and how shitty they get and how they piss in the well. So here's what we're going to do with we ones. We're going to sell them for so cheap. It's not worth speculating. That's the fucking magic here. We are going to target these to DGENs. We are going to sell these on a website that looks fucking gorgeous. WeOnce.xyz. You guys can go check that out. Uh, the, the characters look amazing. It's all beautiful. It's all incredible. But they're going to be $5 for a pack of like nine pieces. And so, yes, you might get a rare one and you might flip it for 10x what you got it for. That means you turn 50 cents into $5. 
And that's not interesting to most people who come do this with these projects in these communities. It's not worth blur farming that shit, for example. Like this, we are intentionally flying low by keeping this economically accessible so that people who normally come into these things behave in certain ways, make a bunch of money, and leave shit behind them, a wake of destruction, are unincentivized to be here. And then when we prove the models out there, we bring it to the mobile device, boom, Disney, see you later. Maybe. Okay, that's really interesting. So what is the timeline between you're right now targeting DGENs with a product they don't want, which is a, definitely an interesting <laughs> just kidding, but like, with a product that doesn't feed the beast. Yeah. Like The timeline between that and then launching on mobile where you can really target the people you do want. Uh, I have so many questions. I mean, we're, we have only so much time, but what, what would you have a uh, thought when on When we that? find the product market fit. So the idea here is that there's a bunch of people who collect things because they like collecting them. Yeah. And then there's some people who collect them because they like flipping them. We just need to simmer off the cream from the, from the milk there. And we'll do a couple seasons exclusively on the web. Uh, and then we're building this all using 3JS. It's all in 3D. It's very impressive. Uh, and so it will be very easy to port. Well, very easy. It will be reasonably straightforward to port to mobile when we are sure that we're right. But I mean, to be clear, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong about all of this, then we won't do that. Then we're like, oh, you were just wrong, and that was a bad idea. Um, but again, Super people cool. aren't spending a thousand dollars to find out that you're wrong. It's like you know, come buy a pack and check it out and see if you like it, and then yeah, you know, build some I love more. that. How did you decide on that three to five dollar price point? And I, and my question comes in part because, you know, I think it's interesting. I, I talked to the team Battlefly, for example, who's a game on treasure, you know, building on, on Arbitrum. And they're targeting like, like uh, emerging market consumers, right? So they're yeah. trying to make things like 20 cents, 50 cents, because they're like yeah. they're the, the, the audience of like mobile game players or people who are interested in gameplay in these emerging economies who would, who would like love actually crypto, but can't, literally can't even afford five dollars like do you see yours if that like or, or like who is that kind of target target market for you in that three to five dollar range is it like kids no i ain't trying to sell shit to kids um someday maybe we'll do that with nfts i still feel like that's the wrong audience for what we're building yeah. we need more boundaries in place in this space before we invite the children in um <laughs> no I, I i think it's for the kind of person who spends five bucks on a latte like that's that's that is mm. the demo for this. If you can afford five bucks for a latte, then you can afford five bucks for a pack of wee ones. You will notice that at least here in Canada, the Lego minifigure bags cost five dollars. There is a parallel mm. there. Uh, and so, is this accessible? As in, emerging economies can spend their disposable income on this? No, it is not that yet. Maybe we'll be able to get there. That would be very cool. Right now, this is targeted at sort of established economies maybe what some people call the Western world. I think that term is probably pretty fucking accurate. And I, th I think I like the measure, if you spend five bucks on Starbucks, then you should do that tomorrow. But today you should buy a pack of Wee Woods. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited to see them. I will obviously be checking out the website and I will obviously buy a pack. I think that's super cool. And the last piece of news before we do a quick round of overpriced, underpriced is that... Any overpriced JPEGs listener or newsletter reader subscriber who goes to weones.xyz, there are a thousand free packs of weones being given away to overpriced JPEGs listeners and subscribers at weones.xyz. So if you're listening to this now, go to weones.xyz, get a free pack, free pack of weones. Sign up to get a free pack. They're not there yet, okay. but you're going to tell us that you want to be on the list and we will get you on the list, 1,000 of you. Sign up and you will get a free pack of weones. Ditto anybody on the newsletter, which I should plug. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, you should probably sign up for the newsletter. We've got a link below for that as well. And thank you so much. That's very exciting. Uh, so is your fucking newsletter. Your newsletter is amazing. Thank I you. I don't read. I don't. I don't try and stay up on the trends. We've already talked about this. We know all this. I read every single issue of your newsletter, top to bottom. Oh my gosh. All the time. I am very touched to hear that. And I like. We. I really. I want this to be like the best newsletter in the space, bar none. Like I, we are going so hard on this thing. So I am, uh, I really am grateful to hear that. Um, okay, quick round of overpriced, underpriced. You know, we didn't actually talk about this. We were going to maybe talk about this, but we didn't have time. So I'm going to do this as our first overpriced, underpriced. This is not just like NFTs. This is like news. Is this news like overhyped, underhyped, for example? Okay. Overpriced, underpriced. Okay. The rumor that Amazon is entering NFTs. God, this could go so many ways. I'm going to say underhyped, but asterisk that with I remember the Fire Phone. <laughs> okay. I am also going underpriced. 
I think it's going to happen. I mean, you know, obviously everybody thinks it's a huge deal and it is total rumor right now. And so I know it, you know, it's being rumored it's going to happen on April 24th. It's it's being rumored it's happening on AVA, AVAX, which I will I will say that's overpriced. I think there's almost, I, I would be shocked if it's on AVAX. It's because they have like a partner, AVA Labs has a partnership with AWS, which like, okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be on AVAX, but who knows? I'll probably eat those words, but I think it is, I think, I think this, I think Amazon is going to do something and I don't know exactly when it'll be, but from that standpoint, I think it's underpriced because, um, you know. Yeah, they're going to do something. I just don't know that it will matter. And it's weird Mm. when companies that big do things that don't matter. But I wasn't kidding about the Fire Phone. Like, that was supposed to revolutionize mobile. It's like like the Coinbase NFT marketplace. You know, we were like, oh, my God, it's the OpenSea killer. And it literally, it was, like, dead on arrival. It was, that was the strangest thing. Because it also, it wasn't even, like, I saw a ton of FUD about it. It was just nothing. Like, it just, like, nothing. It felt like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. That was not, like, we hate Coinbase. We hate centralization and blockchain. Nothing like that. It was just, like, oh, nobody's using this thing. Yeah, it was, like, 4 million people signed up. It's the biggest deal. It's going to, like, totally onboard the masses. And it's the thing that's coming. And then nothing. Um, Okay, next, overpriced, underpriced. Claire Silver work in the Louvre. Lou's fucking thirsty. I don't know why they're doing this. This is a terrible idea. Really. Tell me more. Well, just what the fuck is Claire? Like the Louvre is the home, the greatest home of art in the world that I know of, right? This is this is the apex of you've made it in art. And that WME wants to go sign up the next influencer or whatever or the AI thing and be on brand on trend, for sure. I get it. I get being relevant, timely, um, living in the moment, all these things. But we're not talking about their agent who sign everybody in NFTs if they can. WME is my agent, too, to be clear. Like, I get it. But the Louvre is um, a bar of quality. There is a you have you deserve to be here. Not you were first or you were new or you were interesting because that's mm-hmm. all noteworthy. But you have staying power. One thousand years from now, your art is worthy of people's attention. And I have no reason to believe that Claire is that. Claire might be that, but how the fuck would we know that today? That's like years and years and years from now. We have some sense that Claire is worthy of the masters of the Louvre. This is why I bring you on the show. You've got, I, t- I said this at the top, you've got hot takes. <laughs> they might be horrible takes, <laughs> but they are hot. Um, damn, dude. I mean, I was going to go underpriced because I, I love that. I love that the Louvre is doing stuff with AI art and, you know, like there's sort of like a modernizing element to it. I I love that it's happening for Claire, who I think is a lovely human being and I think a very talented artist. I totally see your point, though, which is like it's just kind of too early to know who is the like. But do you really think I just think those old models like that model of like you come here and we will show you all the art through the years like that's like that's changing. You know what I mean? They need to draw people in. They need people to come and attend the Louvre. And I feel like our, you know, what I have Netflix now. Why the fuck am I going to go look at a bunch of like stagnant paintings from a thousand years ago? Yeah. You remember we talked about the hype cycles that the NFT project should not play because it doesn't allow you to be crypto punks. You end up trying to fucking chase Yuga Labs around in circles. Now you, now the Louvre is going to be chasing fucking Yuga Labs in circles. Yes, they need Mm. to get the new blood in there, but not at the expense of destroying the bar of quality, the seal of approval that the Louvre means. And at the point where like new AI art is swapping in on a regular cadence because somebody said it's cool. And to be clear, I don't think you're trying to be offensive to Claire or her work specifically. You're just like, we just don't know. It's just too new. Yeah, no, no, no. Listen, I know nothing about Claire's work. Uh, The little bit that I saw looked very fucking cool. Like I... Absolutely. Claire's art looks very, very cool. But there are um, millions of artists yeah. making very, very cool art today and have hit no other indication that the work that they're doing uh, should be exhibited in the same halls as that work. That's really interesting. I don't know enough about, I don't know what the Louvre, what's the Louvre doing? Like, 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 I don't, I don't know enough about like the Louvre's strategy, but you're saying like in terms of if they're doing this with other kind of art, but like you're saying hi, if they've always done this to some capacity. So like, I, I don't know to what extent this is like, a, a, a shift from what their strategy has ever historically been like maybe they've always had an element of them that is like new artists get featured or something um but i totally understand what you're getting at and that's a very interesting thing that i would have to investigate more to know if i fully agree with but i really appreciate the the hot take i am as always very willing to be told all the reasons i'm wrong yeah i you're yes cool okay um crowds the danny uh cole open edition drop oh, yeah. i think they sold like thirty-eight thousand of them or something. they made like 1.7 million dollars over the course of this this drop uh i don't know if you're following it overpriced underpriced it's sitting at about i think 0.2 eth right now a little bit under where the floor was which is or where the mint was which is point point oh two nine. sorry 0.02 eth 0.029 was the 
mint pies. I, I don't really get it. I, I hope that everybody who bought the art is very happy with it. And I hope Danny is very happy. And I wish everybody the best. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Cool. I'm going to go underpriced. I'm a, I've always been a big Danny Cole fan. I mean, this is definitely, I have bags here. I like, I think I have one creature left. I, I had a couple and then I sold one. I have like a creature and I have three crowds. So I'm not like, not like heavily. My, my, uh, my future is not resting on Danny Cole as an artist, but uh, yeah, exactly. But I, uh, I do love Danny. I think he's got hustle. I think he's got like his, he's got, he's got like a thing to him. So I could see Danny's work going somewhere in, in the world. And, uh, I also just like him and I like, I, I do like his art. I think it's cool and funky. And so I, uh, for that reason, I'm going underpriced, but obviously, like, not financial advice. Nobody buy a crowd based on this. They also said this is, like, the beginning of their next phase of, what, like, whatever. I feel like people have a lot of goodwill toward Danny and, like, want to see him succeed. And I feel like that was sort of reflected in how many people bought this open edition. And then he's like, this is, I, I don't know. It, it seemed to be the precursor to some things that are coming out. He's got a fashion line he just launched uh, kind of recently, which is interesting. Um, it's not colors that I look great in. Like, he doesn't work. I found out he's colorblind. So he doesn't work with, like, blue greens as much, which... Sort of like my, that's my palette. That's so, your thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like hard for me to buy his clothes because like yellows and purples are like basically not what I wear. But anyway, uh, good for him. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's end it there. I think that's good. I think that's a good overpriced, underpriced. We are at a, an hour, 10 minutes or something. So it's a little long anyway. Mac, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure as always. So much fun as always. WeOnz.xyz. You can go check it out. Claim your, sign up for your free pack. Subscribe to the OPJ newsletter so you can uh, sign up there for your free pack. It's and, the best um, in the game. Man, you're the best. Come back anytime. We'll have you on again. We'll have you on for time number four at some point. I'll be here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Overpriced JPEGs. If you liked this conversation, if you liked this episode, please go ahead and hit subscribe. It helps me out. It helps the show out. And it means you will get alerts and updates when we post new content. Thanks again.